Flashback. Now, y'all, that's what we're doing. Cease fire now. Let's get it popping. The polls are open today. The polls are open tomorrow. Make sure you get out the boat. We're going to let them know how strong and powerful and mighty we are. Get big money out of politics. We're going to show them who the we are. A few moments later. Number one. It's coming. Why are you messing up? What is this? Why are you messing up? Don't know me and don't know my record to even be talking about I know you like pulled that. the fire alarm, you lost your election, and now you're sitting outside in D.C. after having a couple drinks at an event we were just at. What's going on, guys? So we got to talk about the soon-to-be former Congressman Jamal Bowman, okay? Previously, he had his primary, and he got cooked by George Latimer, okay? So... This guy is a member of the squad, and as you guys should hopefully know by now, they had all of these people like AOC, Jamal Bowman, Cory Bush, Ilhan Omar. I think there's like one or two other, like Rashida Tlaib. Like there's a couple of them. These people are woke as hell. They're on that free, free Palestine. They're they're all like the the, the kids at these colleges are destroying the colleges, and these dummies, fools in Congress are supporting the kids and saying if the police get involved and remove the children, well, they're not children, they're adults, first off, but young adults, if they remove these young adults from the colleges and they're invading the campuses and removing the encampments and all of this stuff, that is police brutality and that they could have did this without the cops. I'm like, these people are not the type who you want to negotiate with. They're the type who need brute force, okay? You need to then clap back against them. You need to then give them the straight up elbow drop, the one, two punch, okay? That's the only way. A couple uppercuts here and there. That's the only way to get these fools to cooperate, okay? So this idiot got cooked by George Latimer for being woke as hell. George Latimer is more of a traditional Democrat whereas Jamal Bowman is a far left Looney Tune radical. Okay, so today he got destroyed again. It seems like he just can't help but get his cheeks clapped, except this time by a black woman, a black conservative woman at that. Okay, so Whitley Yates. This is a person who is kind of all over the grid. I don't know if they have like a consistent place where they tend to work, but in a conversation with Jamal Bowman in a debate, she essentially destroyed this man and the Democrat Party for being in the lead position in the majority of the major cities around the United States, but having the worst results. Without further ado, let's get into it. Jamal Bowman of New York, Democratic Congressman. You watched the debate. What's, what's your thoughts on the debate? Trump is wild, man. Trump is <laughs> off the chain, yo. He was talking about executing babies after birth. Roll the clip. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. Madam Vice President, I want to get your response to President Trump. Well, as I said, you're going to hear a bunch of lies. And as you rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. It is happening. Unlike Burger King ladies, you can't have the facts your way. Here are the facts. 21 states and the District of Columbia allow abortion until birth, and 15 states have no protections for babies born alive who survive abortion, meaning they die or in some cases are killed. Remember this from former Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who, by the way, is a doctor, a pediatric neurologist. If a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. It doesn't happen. You just heard it from Governor, Governor Northam. That was wild for the night. He's talking about eating cats and dogs. Wild for the night. Roll the clip. Had over 100 cats in it with the Haitians. They said they was eating them. Actually? Yeah. 
Not fake news. Not fake news. So a van was collecting cats and eating them. I watched that happen, yeah. Watched them get pulled over with the cats and admit to the police that they was eating them. You're not joshing with me. No. I'm almost 50 years old, buddy. I don't, no. You don't mess around. No. So there you have it. They fact-checked him on that because of some letters that they got somewhere um, from a city manager saying, well, we don't believe that's true. Do you think the city manager is going to go out and say, well, that's what's happening? Here who, here's who is saying it. The Attorney General of the State of Ohio. This came out today. Dave Yost is the Attorney General for the State of Ohio. And he accused the media of ignoring evidence surrounding those claims in Springfield that they're having their pets abducted and eaten. The Attorney General of Ohio says it's real. Transgender operations on migrants in prison. Yo, he just says anything. Like, he- so where did Trump get that idea from, you freaking dumbass? Play the clip. He said she supported uh, taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. She also said she taxpayer supported... Taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries for detained migrants. For detained migrants. She actually said she, she supported that. She wrote, both wrote and answered in the affirmative when she was asked this. When I was attorney general, I learned that the California Department of Corrections, which was a client of mine, I didn't get to choose my clients. Right. A client of the attorney general. A client of the attorney general, right. of the office of attorney general. That they were standing in the way of, of, of surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. And there was a specific case. And when I learned about the case, I worked behind the scenes to not only make sure that that transgender woman got the services she was deserving. So it wasn't only about that case. I made sure that they changed the policy in the state of California. So that every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access to the medical care that they desired and need. And I believe it was not only, I know it was historic in California, but I believe actually it may have been one of the first, if not the first in the country, where I pushed for that policy in a Department of Corrections. And she said she also supported it uh, for federal prisoners. That, in addition to no corporate responsibility, is why we have inflation because corporations have been raising taxes on your groceries on everything else she can't even keep a straight face because she knows that this is a bunch of bs how is it like some sort of price gouging and is also inflate like is is one or the other like can you technically have both sure but to imply that that's what's happening here is complete nonsense if it was real price gouging then they would have called it out a long time ago Notice they didn't start talking about that until it was time to get elected. These people, it should be criminal, honestly, to lie this much for the sake of elections, to misrepresent numbers and data. Like, this this got to be some sort of criminal offense. Like, I feel like a normal person who does this is not going to get away with it. Like, what the hell's going on? It's going to come down post-pandemic. And so she's going to go after that, which is part of her economic policy. The the prices weren't even up during the pandemic. It was up on stuff like, like uh, lumber, like like it was a few things. It was the prices were not actually up during the pandemic. That's the thing that's crazy. It's like it's like lumber, uh, and hand sanitizer. It wasn't high behind grocery prices. It just was not the case to bring down those those costs. So when we talk about inflation, that's what we're talking about, you know. And again, they didn't get a lot in the policy because he's wild. And they just going back and forth on character stuff. But yeah, man, it was That was because of Kamala. Kamala's the one doing all the stupid facial expressions and and uh, <laughs> she people were saying they didn't hear her cackle. Yeah, it's cause her mic was muted, but she was cackling and acting a damn fool the entire debate. She was acting like an idiot, like like a child. She was extremely immature during that debate. Again, the system is broken, corrupt, whatever. That's not because of her, it's cause of white supremacy. If you want just complete chaos and here we go and 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 white nationalism which is what he represent cool vote trump but if you're trying to get to some sense of stability in my opinion it's kamala but as you both know you heard me talk before it's not just her it's how are we holding the house and the senate accountable and local elected officials accountable to do the right thing by our people but we also have a foreign policy that supports child migrants in uh, the Congo mining cobalt with their hands that supports all of our technology 
and they're not getting the financial benefits of that. We also have a foreign policy of support. We, we worried about migrants over in Congo, but not in the United States. <laughs> like, wait a minute. We need to send their ass back wherever the hell they came from. So, look, we need to send them back home so they could do some money. It sounds like it's some good money to be made back there. Why the hell are they over here? Mining cobalt. They're mining coal tan. That must be what you're talking about. Thank, thank, you, very, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I got to well, fact check you. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Even though I still think it might be cobalt, but that's fine. <laughs> and you probably do. That's probably why you didn't win that re-election. Oh. <laughs> uh, black children using their hands in their African country mining raw materials that the West, meaning white people, meaning Trump's white supremacy, is using to build wealth, and African nations aren't benefit of that, benefiting from that. So that's again connected to our foreign policy. It's all fucked up. Listen, the the American political system is rooted in white supremacy, and we on the ground, locally and nationally, need to continue organizing to push against that. So, so that's, are you that's being a whoever, part of it? Are you a part of white supremacy and blackface in your position in Congress? Because the no. truth of the matter is, you and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And a lot of these politicians who have been in office for decades, Kamala Harris has been doing this for 21 plus years, almost older than me. Not in Congress. Hold up, hold up. It, 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 listen, listen. Joe Biden has definitely been there longer than we me. We ain't talking about Biden. Hold on. We're talking about the system. Joe Biden's the president right now, bro. Like, stop it. I don't understand. These people, you, you want to support Joe Biden and you want to denounce him. It's, it's like they're playing this stupid obfuscation game is not gonna work. I thought we were just talking about the system. We are. One second, let me finish. Black man, black man, <laughs> you have voted black. to send that money over there. You no, have, voted, hold on, you have voted. You obviously to, don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let me finish, sir. Let, 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 let her finish and then we'll let you respond. Um, claiming my time. You have voted and been a part of a party that uphold, built, cultivated, and created these systems. Dare I even say perfected them? Dare I even say perfected them? And so to sit here and to say that our political system is all of these things when you're in it right now, when a lot of the people that we see coming across our screens and creating the policy have been there for decades. At the end of the day, whether or not Trump is polished or not, because he's been doing this for four years versus the person that's been doing it for 21 or before y'all uno reverse Biden up out of there, who has been doing it for <laughs> multiple decades, they uphold all of it. And your party in particular has been one who has created policies that have negatively impacted people that look like me and you while sending that money overseas. So I'm just trying to understand if it's rooted in white supremacy, then are you a white supremacist in black face that's upholding these structures? Oh. <laughs> oh. So again, you obviously don't know me and don't know my record to even be talking. I know you like pulled that. the fire alarm. You lost your election, and now you're sitting outside in D.C. after <laughs> having a couple drinks at an event we were just at. I know. <laughs> oh my God! What happened to him, Doctor? He got served. Worst I've ever seen. <laughs> he mostly got served here and here. But the worst serving was here in the pelvis region. Spending, spending his time with our lovely audience, I'd say at that. Thank you. A absolutely. And that's uh, uh, besides the point, that last point you just said. Oh, but anyway, shit. the Republican and the Democratic Party have both been complicit in supporting uh, white supremacist ideology. So let's be clear about that. In my opinion, the Democrats still have done more to support working class people and marginalized people in our country, whether it's childcare, whether it's paid leave, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's reparations, none of that does this current <laughs> Republican Party support. And so the system has to change. Don't gaslight us, right? I'm going to gaslight. Well, I'm going to I'm don't talk you. about I'm a, don't I'm talk about cook. the things that you guys support when you know that your party wasn't the one that created them. Like, how dare you say that Republicans don't support small or minority businesses 
who cultivated, wrote the bill for the Small Business Administration to be an administration, for the 8A program, which provides those no-bid contracts, for businesses like mine to be able to work with the federal government in the way that we're able to work with them. That was a Republican that wrote that bill. There was a Republican that started the Small Business Administration. And the programs that are predicated from the Small Business Administration once again, founded by Republicans. So you can't say that you're supporting these things when the inception of those policies, the inception of Social Security and the inception of all of these things were predicated by Republicans. But what I will say is that both parties do need to do a better job when it comes to tending to the issues of Black people and speaking to issues of Black people. Absolutely. The problem that we have here is only one of those parties relies on the Black community to stay in positions of power for decades, only one of them. Only one of those parties promises things every election year, year after year, the exact same things, and produces absolutely no policies for their communities. And I live in a very blue city that was in a red state. I may be in DC right now, but I understand how this works. I used to also live in California when Kamala Harris was my senator and she was also my attorney general. So I've lived under the rule of both Democrats and Republicans. And what I will say and what I can say is in some of the largest cities that are ran by blue, and I'm talking super majority, the entire council is blue, the mayor is a Democrat, the areas that we live in look the worst. And they rely on us Thanks. year after year to give them our votes in exchange for absolutely nothing. So at the end of the day, if anybody owes the black community anything, whether that be policy, whether that be reparations, it is definitely the party that has used our backs to get ahead. Destruction! Man, someone please call 911 because Jamal Bowman got beyond cooked, okay? He's burnt to a crisp like, Ah, ah, Jamal, <laughs> why she had to do you like that, Jamal? This was horrendous. Like, this dude, he couldn't be George Latimer in debates. He couldn't be Whitley Yates in debates. This dude got destroyed by a person who many would argue, in the, at least as far as the internet and general public world, is a no-name. Jamal Bowman got destroyed by a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, look, look, Jamal Bowman should be happy because in this day and age, due to the wokeness, they love when the black woman overpowers the black man, okay? Like, she's clearly more educated than Bowman is because that's why, if you didn't notice, like, I try to not to clip much out of this, Bowman doesn't really have a whole lot to say in response to what Whitley's saying. He just kind of regurgitates Democrat talking points like, oh, Trump's a white supremacist. There's a genocide in Gaza. Like, this dude just makes stuff up. I showed you at the very beginning, Bowman doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. And I showed you that he's a lunatic. That's why he lost his primary. That's why his ass is about to be homeless. He about to be out of a job. He about to need the Democrats. He needs some public assistance. He gonna need some food stamps, okay? He gonna need some of this money that Kamala Harris talking about giving out to business owners, $50,000, okay? Jamal Bowman is probably not a first time home buyer. So sorry, Bowman, you're probably not gonna get any type of tax credit or anything like that to help you to fund whatever it is you're trying to do because Kamala Harris doesn't like people who have any type of money. So you can forget it. You're gonna need some Republicans in a great economy to keep the prices low. Cause when your ass is unemployed, then you're really gonna need to be able to afford groceries, gas, rent, and whatever the hell else. Damn, uh, if, Cap if Kamala Harris becomes elected, it's gonna be uh, additional capital gains taxes even if you don't sell your property, your stocks, or your investment portfolios, et cetera, she's gonna tax them anyway, screw it. Cause F you, that's why. That's how Kamala Harris, and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren think, not to men mention all those members of the squad. You're not a member of the squad no more, Jamal. You lost your election. They're not gonna have no mercy, okay? They're gonna be after you. Don't spend more than $600. Don't send more than $600 to your granny because if you do, it's time to collect. <laughs> so this is hilarious because it's true. The Democrats are always in control of all these big cities. The cities are jacked up. And then a bunch of dum-dums keep voting for the same people to live in the same conditions because they're convinced 
that, well, these people are racist, so we're just gonna support the people who keep us broke as fuck. Stupid. Oh, stupid. Stupid. Oh, that's crazy. I appreciate Whitley here doing most of the cooking for me. I didn't have to do it. She did it all. She is a traditional woman, okay? I love me a traditional woman. She loves to cook, okay? So anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate you watching the Black Anomaly Rising channel. I'm out. The President Last called question. on Congressman Jamal Bowman to pull the fire alarm in the Cannon Building and disrupt the uh, So I think what, Bowman, I don't know Bowman at all, but Jamal Bowman, a congressman from New York, did something that was as bad or worse. You look at what's happening to the J6ers and they're putting them in jail for years and years and this guy pulled an alarm system and to show you how corrupt they are, he then said when he got caught, he didn't know he was on tape. I mean, I don't know how you can be in the Capitol and not know it, especially after what happened. And he said, oh, he was trying to get into a door. He thought he was opening a door. It was a door two feet away. He thought he was opening a door. It's a red box that says fire alarm on it. He 